I think in the words of Wayne Gretzky, don't skate to where the puck is. Uh, for those of you who aren't Canadian, Wayne Gretzky was <laughs> a great hockey player. Oh, gosh. I hope we don't have to explain that. But, <laughs> okay. know, but, the, but the idea okay. is that you skate to where the puck is. There's a right. bunch of mean guys swinging sticks. Right. That's the way capital markets are. Skate to where you think the puck is going to go. As an example, uh, I think deferred sustaining capital investments means that resources go broadly higher over the next five years because of shortages. Is it that way? No. Now? No. But it's going to be there. Uh, cash is trash. I don't think so. Uh, I think you have to have cash because I think sometime in the next five years, there's going to be a liquidity crisis. Uh, be a contrarian or you're going to be a victim. For the ordinary folks, I'm extremely concerned. Uh, for myself, a veteran speculator, uh, this is a circumstance made in heaven. Uh, I see several things that to me are at least extraordinary probabilities that nobody else cares about. Uh, the idea that the gold price is constrained and rage bound in the near term, when every circumstance that traditionally has taken the gold price higher is in place, means that bets that I make right now on gold equities when the market doesn't seem to care uh, are likely to pay off for me in the future. So from my own circumstance, uh, it couldn't be better. I would have a very difficult time scripting a, search, a circumstance that was better for me personally. For uh, people who haven't been as lucky in life and people who haven't spent as much time understanding the economic ramifications of policy, people who are less able and less prepared, uh, I'm obviously very concerned for those people. I'm you know, concerned about somebody who doesn't have the skill set to uh, feed his or her family uh, yeah. in an economy where compensation is increasingly tied to utility. If you don't have any utility, you don't enjoy any compensation. And clearly, that's an ugly place to be in a time of inflation. So being concerned for the citizenry, while at the same time uh, appreciating the opportunity afforded me personally... <laughs> Uh, you know, that contradiction is fairly obvious to me. Uh, gold has utility in and of itself. The utility around Bitcoin uh, is, first of all, the network, uh, which is still substantially smaller than gold. I, I, I note that the market cap of all digital currencies just recently exceeded $3 trillion, while the market cap for gold worldwide, not including silver, exceeds $11 trillion. So even in terms of the network aspect, Gold uh, enjoys three times the network that Bitcoin does. Importantly, though, I see them as complementary asset classes. Remember that the total market capitalization of both assets combined is $14 trillion, where the market capitalization of total savings and investment assets worldwide is $650 trillion. In the words of our mutual friend Robert Friedland, both assets combined uh, have the importance worldwide of a pimple on an elephant's behind. Mm. Uh, they are, while they're important to your <laughs> listeners and they're important to me, they don't matter in terms of the global economy. There's lots of room for both of them. The enemy, if that's the right phrase, the competitor for gold in terms at least of the fondness of developed nation investors is probably the S&P 500 around the speculative fringes, uh, around that group for whom a $13 trillion market capitalization in a $650 trillion market cap world is important. Certainly there is a fight for the imagination, but that fight I think is more fiction than fact. Uh, for one reason or another, uh, every 10 years, every 15 years, there's a major crisis in confidence uh, and a major liquidity crisis. Um, you know, look back to 1981, 1982, look further back than that to 1976, look to 1987, look to the tech wreck in 2000, look to 2008. There have been many circumstances where uh, there have been crises in confidence. Uh, and the consequence of that was that there was a liquidity squeeze. When markets don't have liquidity, markets fall and they fall irrationally. If you, as an investor, don't have liquidity, you get taken advantage of by that circumstance. You panic and you get forced to sell. If you have liquidity and if you have psychological courage, you take advantage of the situation. 
So you need to decide for yourself uh, whether you're going to be a profiteer or whether you're going to be a victim. Uh, I would suggest that being a profiteer is better than being a victim. Take yourself back, Daniela, to 2008, okay. uh, when I know that you were conscious of the markets okay. and you were probably far enough along in your career that you actually had some resources yes. too. Uh, the circumstance in 2008 was that people who had anticipated a potential period of illiquidity, irrespective of the origin, and had cash had the ability to take advantage of equity markets where the prices had fallen by 50 or 60 percent right. with no change in the underlying value of the assets if you converted that to physical goods it was as though you were in your absolute favorite department store or clothing store and everything on the shelves was marked off 60 percent if you have the cash and the courage it's an opportunity if you don't it's a catastrophe right and i think irrespective of the medium of exchange that you think will survive. Exactly. The idea is that if you have liquidity in a world that goes illiquid for a while, right. you either uh, come out of it in very fine shape or you come out of it in very poor shape. I like to tell my former clients, you know, now that I'm a retired gentleman, uh, a man of leisure, uh, I, I like to tell my former clients that yes, when you hold cash, your purchasing power is deteriorating. It's deteriorating quarterly. Uh, but the deterioration in purchasing power, I would suggest is an option payment because in a circumstance where you have a liquidity crisis, a, a confidence crisis, the opportunities that are available to you if you have the cash or the courage are spectacular. It's happened at least four times in my career now and I'm uh, confident that it will happen at least one more time. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, one million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, 
Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.